Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to design a creative product comparison chart with Divi. So this is the final design we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so before we begin, let's go through the things that we need in order for us to achieve our design. So first of all, we're going to need Divi installed and then we're also going to need two images. So these images will work as the two images or the two products that we're trying to compare. All right, so right now I'm in my admin dashboard, so I'm going to come over here and create a brand new page. So I'm going to click on add new, and then we're just going to call this page product comparison. Click on use the Divi builder, and then I'm going to go straight to the visual builder. So for this design, we need to start from scratch. So I'm going to click here on build from scratch. So for this, I'm going to need a single column. So I'm going to click here. Now, before we start adding all our modules, let's start adding our background color for our section. So I'm going to come over here to the top left, click this gear icon to enter my section settings, click on background, and we're going to add a background color. Now, if you want to use the same colors I'm using in this tutorial, uh, I will leave a link to this uh, blog post in the show notes below. So next, let's add a background gradient. So I'm going to come over here to the second tab, click the plus button, and I'm going to add my first color. Now, this first color here is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm just going to slide this slider down so we can get the RGBA values. And then I'm just going to highlight what's between the brackets and add my color. Next, I'm going to add my second color. And again, it's going to be an RGBA value. So I'm going to paste my values between the brackets, just like that. Now we need to uh, add our gradient type. So at the moment it's set to linear, so we need this to be radial. And then we need to come over here to place gradient above background image and make sure that it's set to yes. Now let's save. And then the next stage now is to go into our row settings. So I'm going to click here on the gear icon. So the first thing we need to do is to go to the sizing. So I'm going to click on design, sizing, and we're going to make this full width. So I'm going to come over here to use custom width. We're going to change this to percentage and we're going to drag this all the way to 100%. Okay, so now that we're done, I'm going to click on save. And then the next stage is to add my text module. So I'm just going to search for it and then select it. Right, so what we need to add in this text area here is the word compare and versus. Okay, so what we need to do now is to add these two words compare and versus. Make sure that the word compare is a heading title so I'm gonna select it click this drop down and set it to heading 2 okay so now the next stage is to customize our text so I'm gonna come over here to the second tab the design tab and then I'm gonna click on text so over here we need to make sure that we assign this to the font that we need so my font here is going to be monster at so I'm gonna select it and then over here for the font weight I'm gonna set this to ultra bold for the text style I'm gonna select uppercase. Right, so the next stage now is to add our text color. So I'm going to come over here and click this eyedropper tool. And this is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm just going to drag this slider here to the right and paste my values between these brackets, just like that. Right, so the next stage now is to add our text size. And our text size is going to be 3VW. So I'm just going to enter that in here. And then on the line height, we're going to set this to 1.8 EM. And for the text orientation, we're going to center this. Right, so the next stage now is to adjust our heading 2. So I'm going to come back over here, go to my heading text, select heading 2. And our font here is set correctly, so that's fine. So let's go to our text size. So over here on the heading, uh, heading 2 text size, I'm going to set this to 13VW. The letter spacing needs to be set to 1VW. Next, let's add our text color. So I'm going to click this eyedropper tool. And this again is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm just going to drag it down a little bit and then paste my values between the brackets. And by the way, if you want to use this, the exact same values as I'm using in this tutorial, I will leave a link in the description below so you can go directly to the post. Right, so over here on our heading to font weight, I'm going to set this to light. Right, so the next stage we're going to do now is to add our margins. So I'm going to search for custom margins. So I'm just going to search for it here to make it easier for me to find it okay so i'm going to search for margin so the margin that we need to add is the margin at the bottom so i'm going to add minus 13. okay so we're done with this i'm going to click on save and then the next stage now is to duplicate this row so i'm going to come over here duplicate it and what we need to do is to delete what's inside here like that 
And then in the actual row, we need to change the structure. And for this, we're going to need two equal columns. So now we need to update uh, the rows. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon to enter my row settings. So the first thing we need to do is to adjust our gutter width. So I'm going to click on design, spacing, sizing. And then I'm going to come over here to my gutter width and set this to one. Next, we're going to add us, uh, we're going to add some padding. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and we need column one custom padding to be set to 2VW. So I'm going to add my padding to the right. And for column two, I'm going to add this to the left. So this is where we're going to add our images. So for now, let's save and then we're going to add our images. So I'm going to click this plus button and add my image module. I'm going to select it. And I have my image loaded up in my media library. So I'm just going to delete this image here and click this plus button. Click on my media library. And these are where my images are. So I'm going to click my first image, click upload an image. Next, we're going to come over here to design alignment and we're going to set this to right. Next, we're going to come over here to sizing and we're going to set this to about 70% and we're going to align this module to the right. Right, so the next thing we need to do now is to add some, um, some padding to the bottom. So I'm going to click here on spacing and for our custom padding bottom, I'm going to add 40 pixels. Right, so since we've added all the settings onto this module, what we need to do is to just uh, copy and paste it over there to the right. So I'm just going to copy it by hitting Command C or Control C if you're on a PC. And then I'm just going to paste it over here. Now, the only change we need to do here is two changes. We're going to go in and change this image. So this ideally needs to be your second product. So I'm going to select my second product here. Click Upload an Image. So now we need to adjust our alignment. So I'm going to click on Design, Alignment. And this time, this needs to be aligned to the left. Okay, like that. Right, so moving on, let's go ahead and save. And the next stage now is to add our text module just below this product. So I'm going to click this plus button and search for my text module. I'm going to select it. And uh, what's going to come in here is going to be just the word old product. So to make things easier for us, we're just going to copy the styles of this text here and apply it to this text module. So I'm just going to save this for now. And then I'm going to... Uh, Click on the module settings, design, I'm going to right click and copy text styles. I'm going to close that and then over here, I just need to right click and paste the text styles, just like that. Right, so all we need to do now is to go back in and adjust our text size. So I'm going to click here on design, text, and we're going to set this to 16 pixels. And for the text orientation, we're going to set this to right. And then now we need to go into the advanced tab and add some custom CSS to the main element. So this is the, uh, the CSS we need to add. And um, if you need this uh, CSS, it can be found on the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. All right. So with that done, I'm going to click on save. And then the next stage now is to copy this text module and paste it on the right. So I'm going to hit Command C or Control C on a PC. And then I'm going to hit Command V on a Mac or Control V on a PC. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon to go into my settings. And then we're going to change our orientation to left. So I'm going to click here on uh, Design Text. And then I'm going to search for my text orientation. Set this to left. And then over here on the Advanced tab, Custom CSS, our text align needs to be set to left. Oh, and before I forget, we need to go back over here into our content tab. And uh, as you can see, this is set to old product. So this needs to be set to new product. Great. So once we've, uh, once we're done with that, we can now go ahead and save. So now it's time to create the product comparison chart. Right. So let's start off by adding our row. So I'm going to click this plus button and we're going to need two columns for this. So I'm going to click on two columns. So before I add my modules, let's go ahead and customize our row. So I'm going to click on the row settings and let's go to custom width. So over here on sizing, we're going to click on use custom width and set this to 100%. Next, we're going to come over here to use gutter width and set this to one. Right. So we want to add uh, some padding, uh, but this needs to be added to the bottom. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and for our custom padding, we're going to add zero to the bottom. And for our column one custom padding, we're going to add two VW to the right. 
And for column two custom padding, we're gonna add two VW to the left. Right, so for now, let's go ahead and save. And then in the, next col in the left column here, we're gonna add a divider module. So I'm gonna search for divider, select it. We're gonna click on background and we're going to add a background gradient color. So for our gradient, we're gonna click this uh, second tab click the plus button and I'm going to add my first color. Now my first color is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm going to add my values between the brackets like that. I'm going to add my second color. Again, this is going to be an RGBA value. Paste my value between the brackets. So on the gradient direction, we're going to set this to 90 degrees. Our start position is going to be at 35%. Right, so let's come over here to our design tab. And for color, I'm just going to add my color by just pasting. Now this time, this is going to be a, a hexadecimal value. So that's quite straightforward. Next, we're going to come over here to sizing. And for our divider weight, uh, this is set to 23 pixels. So this is fine. So now it's time to add our custom padding. So I'm going to click here on spacing. And we're going to add 70% to the left. Okay, so one more, th uh, one more thing here. Uh, the divider weight, you need to make sure that you add 23 because this is what brings this design here. Okay, so that's great. So all we have to do now is to save settings. So now we're going to copy this uh, this design here and add it over here to the right. So this just saves us, saves us uh, time to make all these uh, changes. So I'm going to click here on my module settings and make a few customizations. So let's start off with the background color. So I'm going to click here on background and then we're going to go to the gradient and I'm going to choose my left color. Paste it in here because it's an RGBA value. Choose the second color. So this time our start position needs to be set at 70%. And now it's time to add my color. So I'm going to come over here to color and paste my color in here. Now this again is going to be a hexadecimal value. Now it's time to add our padding. So I'm going to come over here on sizing. Oh, in fact, we need to go to spacing. And this needs to be 30% to the right. And let's delete this 70%. Now that we have this, the next stage now is to add another row. So I'm going to click this plus button here. It's going to be a single column. Click the plus button and add a blurb module. Great. Okay, so, so for our contents, I'm going to set this to the word feature. And instead of an image, we're going to use an icon for this. And let's search for the icon we need. So this is the icon we're going to go with. Right, so now it's time to stylize this. So I'm going to come over here to design. So I'm going to go to image and icon. And we're going to add our icon color. So I'm going to click here on this icon. And I'm going to paste my value between the brackets. Next, I'm going to click on use icon font size. Because right now our icon is way too big. So we'd like to adjust that to a reasonable size and the size we're going to reduce this to is about 30 pixels. Next we're going to come over here to text and we're going to set our text orientation to centered. So now let's go and stylize our text. So right now our body font is set to default. We're going to choose Monsterat for this. Select it and we're going to choose ultra bold for this because right now it's set to just regular. Okay so now that we set this to ultra bold uh, we're also going to change uh, the color for this. So I'm going to come over here to my text body color and we are going to use an RGBA value again. So I'm going to paste my value between the brackets, just like that. And for our body letter spacing, we're going to set this to two. And we also need to set up, uh, set up our custom margin. So I'm just going to search for it here. And for our custom margin, we're going to set this to minus 20 pixels. Great. So there's one thing that I also forgot here, and that is uh, this text here, which says our title is not supposed to be there. So I'm just going to go back to my content area, click on text, and we're going to get rid of this title text here. So right now we can see that this icon and this text, we have uh, quite a bit of space between that. So in order for us to fix that, we need to add some CSS. Uh, so I'm going to click on this, on this advanced tab, click on custom CSS. And on blurb image, we, this is where we're going to add our CSS code. So I'm just going to enter it there. And now you can see that the space now has been reduced because I've just added margin bottom to the blurb image. So now that we have the basic layout, all we have to do now is to duplicate all these until you have the amount of comparisons that you need. Right, so what we need to duplicate here are the rows. So I'm just going to do one example and then you can go ahead and do the rest. 
So I've just done that. And then I'm also going to do another duplication here. And then I'm just going to drag this into position. Right, so go ahead and add the amount of uh, features you need here. And then once you're done with that, I'm just going to quickly show you how to adjust these bars. Right, so now that we have all our features, the next stage now is to adjust our div uh, divider settings. So I'm going to click here on my module settings. So all you have to do is to adjust your start position. So I'm going to click on background. So right now, my start position is set at 30, uh, 35%. So as you can see, when you drag this, so let's say we set this at uh, 62%. I'm just going to click on modified style so everything is in place here. So our custom padding, right now it's set at 70%. So I'm going to adjust that and set it to, let's say, 60%. And now we can see that this bar has now shifted. Okay, so that's what you need to do to the rest of them so that you can adjust your features. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and save. Okay, so for a final touch, you may want to add a divider background for your section. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come over here to my section settings, click on design, dividers, and we are going to add a top divider here. So I'm going to click here on the style, and uh, we're going to go with this one right here. So I'm going to select it. Next, we're going to add our divider color. So this is going to be an RGBA value, so I'm just going to drag this down a bit and paste my value between the brackets. And now we're gonna add our divider height, and this is going to be 19VW. So there's one more thing I need to do here, so I'm just gonna save this. So this text here needs to be really light, so I'm gonna go back into my module settings, click on design, and I am going to make sure that this is set to thin, or even ultra light, let's see what, how that looks. So I'm gonna try thin, in fact I'll go with thin. Right, so that's our final design. So let's save and exit. So I'm going to click on Command S to save. And then I'm going to exit the Visual Builder. So this is how our final design looks like. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.